Greetings and welcome to worship at Rockport United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Lauren Radzik and this is my family and we are happy to be worshiping with you. Friends, I invite you to join me in our call to worship, responding with the bold print. Come, let us worship the Lord our God. For the Lord is our God and we are the Lord's people. As we wait upon the Lord, let us open our ears that we might both hear and follow the word of the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, let us open our eyes, that we might both see and perceive the will of the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, let us open our hearts, that we might understand with our hearts, offer God our brokenness, and turn to the Lord for healing. Friends, we invite you to sing with us for our opening hymn. people just like us, those who are broken in body and spirit, men who are grieved, women who questioned, siblings who did not get along, parents who chose favorites. God's word of grace is meant for people just like us. There is no need for pretense before God. Let us confess our brokenness and go to God in prayer. Patient and persistent God, we come polished and presentable to worship, as if we knew what to expect, as if this were a safe and predictable place, as if we could simply observe. Holy One, forgive our tepid expectations. In the mystery of your love, overshadow us. Plant the seeds of your gospel in each of our hearts until we bloom and spill with your passion to serve in a world that is wasting. 
Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God dwells in you. If you hear nothing else today, hear these words. Jesus Christ died for us while we were still sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us pray. God of life, by the power of your Spirit, come to us now. Plow our hearts with your living word until we who are broken become fertile with your love. For we long to bear fruit into a world that is wasting. We pray in the name of Jesus, whose charge we bear. Amen. Hear the lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the first verse. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free, free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind of the flesh is death, but to set the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though your body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life through your mortal bodily bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Hello. Um, I'm Father Dave Radzik, and I'm here with uh, uh, my lovely wife, Pastor Lauren Radzik of, of uh, Rockport United Methodist Church, and my darling little child, Sophia. Um, this morning we heard the parable of the sower, and the story goes something like this. Uh, a sower, that is a farmer, walked along his field, he scattered his seeds in all different sorts of places, some soil was rocky, some soil had thorns in it, and some of the soil was just right. I don't know if you've ever gardened, but you just have to have that soil just right for it to grow. I know nothing about gardening. I'm from this city, so I have no idea. But we, we hear about this, and that seed is the Word of God that is the word of God from Jesus. And so our hearts have to be just like that good soil. It has to be nurtured and grow in our heart, just like, just like when we grow a garden at home. And so will you pray with me this morning? Loving God, we ask you to bless the children of this church to bless them this day and every day, to bless their families uh, and their homes um, as they enjoy um, this summer. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A lesson from the Gospel according to Matthew, 
the 13th chapter beginning at the first verse. That, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in, this, in, the, in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no rock, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the world, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares for the word, world, and the lure of wealth choke the word, and, ye and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray together. Loving God, you have gathered us here today to remind us of your love sent to us through your Son, Jesus. Today we've gathered to worship you, longing for your presence to be made real in our very midst. So come, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes to your grace around us. Let us be fertile ground for the seeds that you are planting in us. Root our hearts in you and move us toward compassion, sending us out to boldly share your love with the whole world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I grew up in northern Wayne County, amid the green and gold patchwork fields of my friends and neighbors. I didn't live on a farm, but my family planted a large garden every single year. And every year, one of my distinct childhood memories is sitting down with seed catalogs doing prep work for that garden. We sketched out where each type of plant would go. We were careful to rotate the crop so that the nutrients were left in the soil for each particular fruit or vegetable. When we were finished, we made a budget. We can spend this much on corn and that much on potatoes. When spring hit, We'd order what we needed, head down to the garden store and to the seed store to purchase our seeds and our plants, and carefully stay within our budget. When we were quite sure that the frost was over, or at least as sure as one could possibly be in Northeast Ohio, my father would till the soil, and we planted rows of peas and corn and onions after school and work. Today, in our Gospel lesson, Jesus tells a story that's familiar to many of us, the parable of the sower. It begins with the sower going out to plant in a garden, but quickly we learn that the sower doesn't play by any of the established rules of gardening. On the way to the field, the sower drops seeds onto the path, and the birds came and eat them up. 
Some seeds fell onto the rocky ground without much soil. Still other seeds fell among the weeds and the thorns, and they were choked out of life. And some seeds fell in good soil. They took root and grew great crops for the harvest. Reading this story, I'm struck by the generosity of the sower. The sower doesn't take time to worry about where every last seed is planted. Instead, the sower generously sows seeds in every kind of place, even if the likelihood of that seed's growth was small. And so it is with God's love and grace. God sends grace and mercy in every direction, to every kind of place, to every kind of person. Sometimes grace falls on the path where it's scooped up and carried away. But who knows where that gift will be planted with God's love when it makes it to its final destination. Sometimes grace falls in the rocky places of our lives and our world. Who knows what might grow in unexpected places. Sometimes grace falls in the midst of thorns and weeds. But who knows what might come of a seed planted in the midst of challenges. And sometimes grace falls in the midst of good soil, ready and prepared for the planting, so that grace accomplishes its intended purpose to transform lives. God, the sower of grace into the world, is incredibly generous with God's gifts. God doesn't only look for the best and brightest people, those of us who make the best soil to share love and grace with. Instead, God showers love and grace all over the place, even on those of us, like me, who don't always make the best soil. Sometimes we're the most unlikely candidates for growth and transformation. God doesn't count the cost of throwing seeds into difficult places. God doesn't decide to, against offering love and grace. God is extravagant and generous. God offers love without reserve to all people in every kind of situation. And God seeks to transform the world with love. There isn't too high a cost to reach any one person. There isn't a place worth skipping when it comes to planting seeds. No matter how broken we are, no matter what our deficiencies as soil for God's planting, no matter what, God sows love and mercy into our midst. That is what God, the sower of grace, has done for us, for you and for me. God offers us everything, even himself, in Christ who came to dwell among us. There is no cost too high for God to sow love into us and to transform our lives. Not the cost of seeds that fall into unlikely places, nor the cost of death on a cross. And in Christ's death and resurrection, we find new life with God. We are forever changed by the gift of God's grace sown into our lives, even when it didn't make any sense. In Christ's death and resurrection, there is no more condemnation but the promise of freedom and opportunity. Death and brokenness and sin do not have the final word, but instead a transformed life lived in the Spirit changes our story. But in order to change our story, we have to first acknowledge the reality of where we are right now. In the midst of brokenness and grief and lament. Friends, we are a broken people. We live in a broken world. And in the midst of a broken church, there is no going back to normal. A spoken word author and artist, Sonia Renee Taylor, puts it this way. I feel like the bearer of news that sounds awful, but actually is not. We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal, other than we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. 
We should not long to return, my friends. We are being given an opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. What we have been forced to leave behind, we needed to leave behind. What is getting us through is what we will need to take forward. If we're gonna heal, let it be glorious. Grief and brokenness are part of our lives. Grief comes in the brokenness and loss of what once was, the normal that we had come to expect. The ongoing coronavirus pandemic has laid bare some of the worst brokenness in our society and around the world. In the United States, we see the results of a broken health care and political system, those that cause harm and cannot effectively function in the midst of crisis. We are seeing the results of systemic racism and white supremacy that affect the health, well-being, and livelihoods of our black and brown siblings in Christ. We continue to see the brokenness of the world in the churches that we love. As we struggle with oppression, racism, sexism, discrimination based on ability, sexual orientation, or gender identity, and any other number of identities, Friends, we are a broken people, and we are a grieving people, and we are a people in need of transformation. We long for a sense of peace and a return to normal. We long for a time free March when we could go back to the way things used to be, ignoring all that the pandemic has laid bare. We long for the illusion of safety, and community, and society that was working. Many of us have privilege that has allowed us to ignore the world, and our churches have not always been safe places for all of God's beloved children. Privilege has shielded many of us, including me, from the realities that our normal was broken and filled with sin. Our normal was and still is in need of God's grace and radical transformation. As much as we long for that illusion of normal, as much as we grieve for what we have lost, and that grief is warranted, as much as we acknowledge how difficult things are right here and right now, we cannot go back. We must not go back. As Christians, the only thing that we can do is go forward. The only way that we get through all of this is to go into it together, acknowledging what has been, grieving what was lost, and hoping in what will be through the power of Jesus Christ. Friends, Christ has the power to transform our stories, sowing seeds of extravagant grace and helping us create the kingdom of God in our midst as we grow. In Romans, Paul reminds us that the way we live our lives as Christians matters a whole lot. The way we live our lives tells the story of what we believe. Either we are living in the midst of our brokenness, or we are actively seeking transformation in Christ. Either we are living in the flesh or we are living in the spirit. Either we are playing by human rules, sowing seeds only in places that make sense, or we are living in the spirit, generously sowing seeds of love wherever we go, searching for transformation and counting on God to help those seeds take root in us and to be at work in the world. You see, friends, this story of the sower isn't only about seeds and what type of soil they're sown into. It is about the generosity of the sower. It is about transforming our brokenness and living new life in Christ, uninhibited by what was and free to dream about what will be. This is a story about God's extravagant, self-defying love for us. Love enough to come into the world, to preach and teach, to offer himself as sacrifice, and to rise again in glory. 
Friends, the message of Christ's life, death, and resurrection is all about God's extravagant love for us, which offers us transformation and healing. It's all about the lengths that God will go to reach just one of us and to transform the world, planting seeds of love and grace in us. No matter who we are, no matter what we have done, no matter how difficult it is for us to hear and accept, God loves us. And God wants to transform our lives. God doesn't want for us the old normal. Instead, God asks us to step into transformation, to step into the light of love and grace so that God might be at work in us and through us. So the question we are all asking right now is what does this transformation look like, particularly in the midst of our present brokenness? I think the transformation looks like generosity and care. It looks like wearing a mask. It looks like giving space for grief and lament while still looking forward to what lies ahead. Transformation looks like glorious healing, where we dream and work for a future that is inclusive and beneficial for all of God's beloved children. What would change if our churches really looked like that? If we lived into those seeds of love and grace that are planted in us even now? What would change in our country and in our world? What would it be like if we stopped counting the cost of the seeds and instead started relying on God to give the growth, trusting in God without fear of failure, without looking back to what was, and instead looked to the glorious healing that will be? Friends, who knows what God will do, what our healing will look like, if only we allow God's love to fully transform us I don't know about you, but I'd like to find out what that looks like. I'd like to be a participant in all that God is doing now and will do in our churches and in our world in the future. Because I really want to know what that glorious healing that God offers will look like. Because what I do know about God, without a doubt, is that God's healing will be more glorious than we can imagine. Friends, may it be so. Amen. Friends, let us affirm our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's join in prayer. Holy God, we were yours before we drew breath, and still we will be yours when the pulse of life ceases. In every fragile, reckless moment, we belong to you. We thank you for the gift of life. May the love we have received spill gratitude from our hearts. May the wounds we carry open our hearts to the needs of others. May we recognize in your mercy the faithfulness that judges and redeems every human bond. We lift to you now all that seems irreconcilable in our families, in our schools and workplaces, in our nation, in your church, in your world. We pray for those we identify as leaders in every sphere of life and for all whose decisions weigh heavily on others. Even so, Lord, 
Give us the courage to name ourselves as those whose responsibility is great. Teach us to act, to tend the world you love, to sow more than we reap, to heal more than we wound, to make room for others as you made room for us. Redeeming God, stake your claim upon us now. Until we hear your gospel echo in each stranger's story, and see your image reflected in every wounded face. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who unsettles our lives for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. And we pray boldly using the words that Jesus taught to us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we invite all who are able to give generously to support the work of Rockport United Methodist Church. If you are watching on our website, rockportumc.org, you can give by clicking the Give button on the top right of your screen. If you're watching elsewhere on Facebook or YouTube, we encourage you to visit us online at rockportumc.org and click the Give tab to access our online giving portal. Of course, you're always welcome to mail your offerings to the church office as well. Friends, we bring our gifts out of gratitude for all that God has given to us because tendrils of God's love have worked their ways into the soil of our hearts. Beloved, let us yield our lives and our gifts to God's abundant harvest.
dedication. Holy God, you relieve us from the burden of our guilt, heal us from our brokenness, and save us from the loneliness that isolates us from others and from you. With our offerings, we pledge our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen.